All right. Uh, so let's talk about um, chapter seven. This last unit of material covers chapters seven and eight. And honestly, it's kind of a hodgepodge of, of material, I, I feel like it's, but, but it's related in the sense that it's like applications of trig in other areas of math. Uh, with exception to <laughs> the first few sections, which, which are all just about solving triangles. Um, we've talked about solving right triangles in the past, but what we're going to do in uh, 7.1, 7.2, and 7.3 is talk about um, solving triangles that are not right triangles. We call those kinds of triangles oblique triangles, and that's worth writing down. So um, a triangle... that is not a right triangle is oblique. You might hear my kids in the background making noise. They might sound a little crazy, uh, but they're happy. <laughs> um, anyway, so a triangle that's not a right triangle is called oblique. Um, to solve an oblique triangle, we need to have at least three pieces of information. And, and by three pieces of information, I mean either angle measures or side lengths, okay? So we need at least three uh, pieces of information. Uh, and so uh, if you kind of think through the logic of it, you'll find out that there are four possible cases of information that you could be given in order to solve a triangle. And uh, I'm going to list them out. So, so four cases here. So four different types of information you could be given uh, in order to solve a triangle. So case one is that you're given two angles and a side. Um, so that can happen in a couple ways. It could happen that you're given the side and then you're given the next two angles that follow after the side. So you're given a side angle angle. Uh, or uh, it could happen that you're given an angle and then a side and then an angle. So that the side you're given is sort of sandwiched between two angles that you're given. Um, and those are the only two possibilities if you're given two angles and a side. You might think, what about angle, angle, side? But angle, angle, side would be the same thing as side, angle, angle, just uh, kind of viewed from a, a, a different order, <laughs> right? So, so these are the only two ways that you could be given those two pieces of information. And this is the case that we're going to talk about today, right? So case one is what we're going to talk about in 7.1. Second case. Uh, is that you're given two sides and one angle uh, not included between the two sides. So you're given two sides and an angle not, uh, not between the sides. And so what I'm trying to express is you'd be given side, side, angle, right? So you'd be given the side, side, angle case. This case is an ambiguous case. When you're given side, side, angle information, it's possible that you could have one triangle or two triangles that fit the bill. It's also possible you could have zero triangles that fit the bill. So, uh, so we call this the ambiguous case. And um, this is the topic of discussion in 7.2. So we'll talk about this one in 7.2. Um, but both of these two cases, case, case one and case two, they both require the law of signs in order to be able to solve them. Uh, or they don't really require the law of signs, but the law of signs makes it a lot easier to be able to solve these kinds of triangles. So. Uh, so we're also going to introduce the law of signs today, since we're going to be talking about case one. The other two cases involve the law of cosines, and we'll get to those in 7.3. So the, the other two cases are, you could be given two sides and the angle between them.
Okay, and so we call that a side angle side, right? side angle side. And then case four is that you could be given three sides. We call that a side, side, side. Okay, um, if you're given three pieces of, inform of information that match one of these four cases, then you uh, should be able to solve the triangle unless it's a side side angle, in which case there might not be uh, a unique triangle that fits the bill. Um, again, we'll talk about that in 7.2. Um, now, one thing that you might notice is missing is, well, we've talked about if you have three sides or if you have two sides and an angle, or if you have one side and two angles, well, what if you have zero sides and three angles, right? What if you have three angles, angle, angle, angle? Well, uh, there are going to be, if you were just given three angles of a triangle, there would be infinitely many triangles that will fit that description because you could scale the sides to be as big or as small as you want. So you don't get a unique triangle out of that, um, not by a long shot. You get infinitely many triangles out of an angle, angle, angle situation. So it's not possible to solve. It's not possible to solve those kinds of triangles. Um, okay, so these are the four possible cases. Again, we're going to be talking about case one today, and it requires the law of sines. So this is what the law of sines says. It's actually on that formula sheet that I gave you uh, in the previous unit. Uh, law of sines. But we're going to prove this thing now. So here's what the law of sine says. So the law of sine says a over sine a equals b over sine b equals c over sine c. And this is true for any triangle a, b, c. Okay. Uh, so this is so this is true for any any triangle, not just the right triangle, but any triangle at all. Right? This is a, a true statement. And we're going to prove it. This will be kind of an incomplete proof. Uh, like I'm not going to go into all of the hairy details, but but this is the this is the basic idea of the proof. So if we have a triangle, some kind of oblique triangle, so not a right triangle, we can label this triangle ABC. And then remember the way that we label these is that the side opposite of the angle gets the same letter, but in lowercase. So this would be side B, this would be side A, and this would be side C over here. Okay. Now what I'm going to do is drop a perpendicular line from B to from angle B to side B. And I'm going to call that H for hypotenuse. Well, I guess it's not a hypotenuse. Height, H for height. That's why I wanted to call it H. Uh, <laughs> okay, so H for height. Now, if I look at what sine of A is, right? Sine of angle A would be opposite over hypotenuse. That's H over C. Um, if I look at sine C, Sine C would also be opposite over hypotenuse. That would be H over A. OK. Uh, in both of these cases, I can solve for H. So in the top case, if I solve for H, I would multiply both sides by C. And I would get H equals C sine A. In the bottom case, to solve for h, I would multiply by a, and I would get h equals a sine c. But h is the same quantity, right? H, in both cases, h stands for this height right here. And that means that c sine a should equal a sine c.
Well, if that's the case, I can divide both sides by sine C, and I can also divide both sides by sine A. Uh, and if I do that, then I end up with the statement C over sine C equals A over sine A. We can do a little bit better job of writing that C. All right, so C over sine C equals A over sine A. Sure enough. Um, I didn't show that the so I showed that this equals that. I didn't show that they equal B over sine B, but um, it would be a similar line of reasoning, right? You would use a, a similar line of reasoning to show that uh, that that's also that that's also true. So uh, so I'm not going to do it, right? It's the same same sort of thing. The other thing is that we were assuming that. Uh, our triangle ABC was an acute triangle. It could have been an obtuse triangle as well, uh, but the math works out similarly, right? So I'm not gonna go through all the nitty gritty details. Um, that's good enough for me to kind of show uh, that the law of signs is true. Okay, um, so it's a pretty nice, uh, nice little tool and um, here's how it comes in handy. Let's do a couple examples. Let's solve triangle ABC if we're given the following information. So let's solve this if C equals 74.08 degrees, B equals 69.38 degrees and lowercase c equals 45.38 meters. Okay, so I'll give you a second, give the video a pause. Okay, see if you can draw this triangle first and foremost, and then um, once you have your drawing, see if you can apply the law of signs to try to start to solve this thing. Okay, um, here's my solution. So triangle ABC. I, I really have no idea what this thing looks like. I know that B and C are both acute angles, so uh, so I guess I'll kind of draw it like this. So I know that uh, I have 69.38 degrees there and 74.08 degrees there. And then I know that little c is 45.38 centimeters. And I don't know anything else, right? So this would be side A, this would be side B. And I don't know angle A either. Um, I could get angle A pretty easily, right? Uh, that just, I know that the angles of a triangle have to add up to be 180. So I could get angle A pretty, pretty easily. So let's do that. Let's say that uh, uh, A equals 180 degrees minus 69.38 degrees minus 74.08 degrees. How much is that? 180 minus 69.38 minus 74.08 is 36.54. Okay, so there's one piece. <laughs> there's one piece of the puzzle. We also need angle or side A and side B. And uh, uh, so I'm going to apply the law of sines to figure out what those are. Okay. Um, so what we need to do is relate one of these sides and its corresponding angle 
to another of the sides and its corresponding angle. But the thing is, we're only allowed to have one piece of missing information. If we have more than one piece of missing information in our equation, we won't be able to solve the equation. So, so really what I'm doing is I'm looking for uh, the, the matching angle and side where I have both pieces of information. Um, and I see that I have that for C, right? I know angle C and I know side C. So I can use that to my advantage to figure out, for example, I could figure out side B, right? By applying the law of sines. I can say B over sine B equals C over sine C. Okay. So make sure you can see where I'm getting those numbers from. But again, it's B over sine B, right? Sine B equals C over sine C. And now see, I have this equation. I only have one unknown, so I can solve for it. Uh, so this is pretty nice. Um, to solve for B, I would just multiply both sides of the equation by sine 69.38. Uh, I'm just going to go ahead and do that in symbols rather than using my calculator to get an approximation. So I'm going to come down here now and say B equals 45.38 over sine 74.08 times sine of 69.38. Uh, degrees. And then I can punch that into my calculator and see how much I get. <clears throat> Make sure you're in degree mode. I need to change mine. Uh, okay, 45.38 divided by sine 74.08 times sine 69.38. That comes out to about, I think I have, I think I have four significant digits. So I'm going to say this is about 44.17 meters. Okay, so there's side B. The only thing I'm missing now is side A. And I can use the same trick, right? Law of signs to the rescue again. We can say uh, we can say a over sine a. Uh, a we solved for earlier, right? That was thirty six point five four degrees. equals. And now I suppose you have a choice. You could use B over sine B or C over sine C. My inclination is to use C over sine C because this value here was rounded and I don't want to end up with rounding errors in my final answer. So I'm just going to use the information that was given instead. So I'm going to say A over sine A equals C over sine C. And once again, we would solve for A by multiplying both sides by sine of 36.54 degrees. So A equals 45.38 over sine 74.08 uh, degrees times uh, sine 36.54 degrees. I'm just about out of room, but I think I can sneak it in there. Let's see how much this is. 45.38 divided by sine of 74.08 times 
sine of 36.54. Uh, that's about 28.10. meters. Okay, and I've done it, right? So I was given three pieces of information. I found the other three pieces of, of missing information. Um, and that's how we apply law of signs. Okay, uh, let's do another one. By the way, I guess I should have pointed this out before we got going. The pieces of information we started with were this one, this one, and this one. So this would have been an angle, angle, side. You see that? So it would have been an angle, angle, side case. Or I guess a side, angle, angle, right? Side, angle, angle. Let's look at an angle, side, angle, right? We said we wanted to explore case one here. So we just looked at this one. Let's look at an example of an angle, side, angle. So again, let's solve triangle ABC this time. Uh, if we're given that C is 71.83 degrees, B is 42.57 degrees, and A is 2.614 centimeters. Okay, so again, uh, give the video a pause, see if you can work it out on your own, especially now that you've seen an example. Okay, here I go. So I'm going to draw a picture, of course. So B is 42.57 degrees, C is 71.83 degrees and little a that would be this one over here is 2.614 centimeters so again you can see uh, this is an angle side angle right an angle side angle scenario okay um so just like in the last example uh, we can find this missing angle pretty easily, right? We can say, well, A must be 180 degrees minus 42.57 degrees minus 71.83 degrees. And that's uh, 65.6 degrees. Okay, I'm going to go ahead and write that in. Now it's a little more clear, right, that I have two pieces of corresponding information, right? I have angle A and side A. So that's what I'm going to be, that's what I'm going to use to find the missing sides, right? And this is sign, side B and side C. And again, uh, again, I'm going to use law of signs to do that. So I'm going to say, uh, I'm going to say uh, sine or, or B over sine B. So I'm going to say B over sine B equals A over sine A. And that would, of course, imply that B is 2.614 over sine 65.6 times sine Uh, which comes out to 
and about how many sig figs? Four sig figs. So say about 1.942 centimeters. Okay. And then same thing for side C. We can say uh, C over sine C. Whoops equals uh, A over sine A. Okay, so let's see about how much C is. So I'm getting, um, it's about 2.727 centimeters. Okay, and so there's uh, the solution to that right triangle. Okay, so um, pretty straightforward, I think, uh, but, but that's the idea. Um, I wanted to give you one application problem, and I'm going to cheat a little bit and just use one from the textbook <laughs> so that I don't have to write it all down. Uh, the one I wanted to look at was number 38 from your... Uh, 7.1 exercises. Give me a second. I'll try to organize myself. Uh, okay, so here's number 38. Okay, so number 38 says... Standing on one bank of a river flowing north, Mark notices a tree on the opposite bank at a bearing of 115.45 degrees. We didn't really talk about um, how this works. When we talked about bearing, we said that usually they give you bearings like north 45 degrees east or something like that. When they don't give you the direction, it's assumed to be measured from the north. So when they say 115.45 degrees, they're saying from the north, okay, so from due north, uh, 115.45 degrees. And they measure this, uh, they measure this clockwise from north, <laughs> okay. Um, okay, so there's that. Now it says Lisa is on the same bank as Mark, but 428.3 meters away. She notices that the bearing of the tree is 45.47 degrees. The two banks are parallel. What is the distance across the river? Okay. So we're going to have to draw a picture of this, I think, to get the idea. Oh, I better give myself more space than that for drawing the picture. So let's see if we can draw this scenario. So it says, uh, so again, we have Mark on one side of the bank, and um, he notices a tree on a, at a bearing of 115.45 degrees. So let's say that, uh, let's say that Mark is right here. Right, he's on one side of the bank, uh, uh, on one side of the river, I guess. And then on the other side of the river, we've got some tree. So this is the tree down here. And um, it's on a bearing of 
um, 100, what did they say? 115.45 degrees. That's from the north. So, in fact, it would have been easier if I had just put mark right on the bank. Huh? This is why I use pencil. So there's my north-south line. So then, so then this angle right here, this is 115.45 degrees. Okay, so that's where Mark is. Uh, Lisa is on the same bank as Mark, but she's 428.3 uh, meters away. And she notices that the bearing of the tree is 45.47 degrees. 45.47 degrees, again, from the north. So it has to be like, it has to be like a 45 degree angle. So I'm gonna say that she's somewhere down here, All right? So 45.47. Okay, so that's where, oh, what was her name? I keep forgetting. Her name was Lisa. So that's where Lisa is. And it tells us, the problem tells us that they are 428.3 meters apart. So that's that distance. Now the question is, what is the distance across the river? What is the distance across the river? I guess I should have put in, I should have put the tree right on the bank like I was supposed to have done. So this is our scenario and our question is what's this distance? Okay, so that's the distance that we're after. Um, okay. Well, so um, I'm not 100% sure where to start here. I, I haven't looked at this problem prior to starting this video, uh, but let's think about this. Uh, I know this side. So if I also knew this angle, then I could use law of sines to figure out this side here. I don't know if that's particularly useful. Um, Well, then again, I could figure out this angle here pretty easily. So I could figure out that angle. I could also figure out this angle pretty easily as well. They're not necessarily the same. Um, how would that help me? Well, no, because I don't know these distances. Oh, I think this might be a multiple step problem. So I think what I might have to do is uh, use law of signs to figure out what this side is. And then I would have this angle, this side, or rather, I could think of this right triangle then. I would have this angle, this side. Uh, man. Yeah, let's just let's just start let's just start working some stuff out. So here's what I'm thinking. 
Um, I'm thinking that I can get this angle here. I know that this angle right here should be uh, 180 degrees minus 115.45 degrees. So let's see how much that is. So this is 64.55 degrees right there. Okay, now given Given that, I know that this angle must be, uh, since this is a 90 degree angle right here, I know that this angle must be 90 degrees minus 64.55. So that's 25.45. While I'm at it, I guess I could get this one. It should be 90 minus 45.47. That's 44.53, which also tells me that the, that the total angle here, I'm going to run out of space to write it, but the total angle would be 44.53 plus 25.45. That's 69.98. So then I could say something like 428.3 over uh, sine of 69.98 degrees. Again, that's this angle, 69.98 degrees is that total angle there. Uh, so I have this over that angle equals, oh, let's say, uh, this, what should we call this? Let's call this, uh, let's call it uh, A, B, C. So we'll call this A right here. So then we would call, we would say this is A over sine 45.47 degrees. So then A would be, 428.3 over sine 69.98 times sine 45.47. Let's see how much that is. Okay, so that comes out to, so I, I guess we have four sig figs. So to, to four sig figs, this would be 325.0 uh, meters. So now I know that A is approximately 325.0 meters. Okay. Now I can use that to solve for D by just applying some kind of trig function. Like I could say probably, oh, um, cosine 25.45 is D over 325.0, right? Because this is a right triangle here now, so I can just use my, my trig functions. Uh, or I could say sine 64.55 equals D over a, right, whichever one. Uh, so I'm going to, but I'll go with the first thing I said. So this is cosine 25.45 degrees equals D over uh, 325.0. And then solving for D, I would multiply both sides by 325. So D equals 
cosine 25.45. Oh, I'm sorry, 325 times cosine 25.45 degrees. Okay, and then we're almost there. So say 325 times cosine 25.45. <clears throat> that comes out to about 293.5 meters. Okay, and that's the distance across the lake. So there you go. <laughs> Law of signs in action in the real in a real world application. Anyway, so um, so you could have some some uh, application problems in the homework as well. Uh, but that's it. So we'll, we'll call it there.